Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, yeah. I suppose the obvious question is, how do, how do you follow up a, a 9-0 victory? Do you have to guard against complacency? And there might be some of us in the room who remember the last one in 1989 and the, the next game finished 0-0. Ooh. <laughs> mm -hmm. What a crazy result. So first and foremost, um, the scoreline is a, is a freak. Freaky one if you want. Um, don't, doesn't, happen, uh, doesn't happen a lot. Or often and will not happen a lot because of the quality of opponents, but things can go that way um, because we played a good game. So um, everything worked out that that afternoon. We know that boys are not dumb. Um, we don't expect a, a freakish uh, scoreline again because um, for the obvious reasons. Um, so no, I'm not concerned about to be honest because what I want to keep is the, the way we played. So just usually we played games like this. We just didn't score nine times. So we miss more chances. You have, you have you hit the post, the crossbar, whatever these kind of things. And um, in that game, that didn't really happen. I know we missed still a few sitters, which is incredible. But um, no, it's the way we played. That's what we have to keep and not think about a scoreline. That's done. So anyway, strange. I told the boys um, if we would have won one nil, I would have been over the moon. So all fine, great. Um, and if now. 9 0 would feel nine times better. It would be kind of really strange. And it didn't. So it was more like, oh, wow. In the game, it felt great. After the game, it was, oof, that's really, was a really harsh one. Um, and so I think, well, we have to prove it. We have to show that we, that we don't misunderstand the situation, but I'm pretty sure we will not. Just on those chances that you touched on there as well, um, we saw a lot more of Luis Diaz and Mo Salah in the penalty area where, where it matters. Was that, following that defeat at Manchester United, was that more of a, a conscious effort? Was that a message from you? Yes, but not because of the Man United game, uh, just in general, we have to wrap. I saw situations where uh, Mo crossed the ball, and I think the two players in the centre of the box were Henderson and Trent Alexander-Arnold. So um, we have to be more flexible. We need to bring players in the box. Who it is, I couldn't care less. It's just about... Um, Having bodies in around the box, being in the right positions, these kind of things. My favorite goal from all the nine were, was actually Harvey Elliott's goal. And not, it was the beauty, but not because of that, but um, because we were that close together, we were that connected, that we could react that quick. And it was in the end really not to defend in, in this specific moment. So, um, yeah, it's. But we can talk about the game if you want for another year, but it's, um, it doesn't make too much sense, I know. So it's just um, the way we played, uh, we have to take into the next game because that's the way we want to play. But nobody should expect that we um, score again with pretty much each situation because that is just unlikely. Uh, final few days of the, of the transfer window, I'm sure a 9 0 scoreline doesn't alter. Your, your thinking, but are you still in the market, particularly for a, a midfielder? Ish. Somehow, yeah. But the, the closer we get to the to the um, last minute, the more likely it gets. That's how it is. Um, and um, yeah. It, it, well, what can I say? Nothing. Yeah, we are not out. Well, but you're, not, you're not going to tell me names, but I cannot. I couldn't if I wanted. So um, and I don't want. Um, but it's just it's 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 difficult. It's really difficult because um, the right for sure there are a few players out there which would be the right ones, but um, they have different issues. Some of them are contracts, clubs they don't want to sell, all these kind of things. So that's how it is and then we cannot force it. And um, I can't wait until, uh, so we'll see. When is it over exactly? The clock, the clock is ticking, yeah, it's Thursday at 11 o'clock, that's the end of it. Thursday 11 o'clock, so there's still time. So, um, But when it's then over and we signed or not signed, then I'm really happy about that because then we can stop thinking about it in that moment because it's, it's just in that moment and we can just focus on the squad we have, on the team we have, be ready to face all the problems we'll have in that season, be ready to, to face them and, um, and sort them and go there through together. And with together, I really mean our, um, even the 
the, the, the our supporters who are pretty active on social media and stuff like this, that we then just can stop doing that because it's uh, we have a good football team and we have injuries, they come back and all these kind of things. Um, if somebody expects us just to do always what others are doing or what some people wish to do, that's not possible. Never happened before, will not happen in the future. This club arrived here in this situation with the way we deal with situations so and that's that's when i say i make don't make the decisions about how much we spend it's the truth but i never did and we're still here so and and, and won a couple of things and now we have just and a specific from a specific moment on we can then finally focus on the really important stuff yes and have bring in the right players is important but if we can't do that now then we can't do it thank you welcome and just as in terms of that, that bigger squad, then we saw some young faces, some new faces, some new young faces coming on the pitch at, at Bournemouth as well. Stefan, Fabio, and young Bobby Clark, whose dad used to play for Newcastle, which is unbelievable. Sorry, I didn't know it. So nobody told me, and I saw it now. That, um, but he's older than Millie, is he? His dad. Lee Clark. Well, there's, there's a moment in 2005 when Bolton yeah, played, exactly, yeah, Newcastle played both together, and his dad came on with. But is Lee Clark Millie. older than Millie, or is yes. this the same? Yeah. Slightly. He just looks younger than him. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the point was. Yeah, what was the point? Given the fact that there's quite a lot, there's loads of games, isn't there? Every half an hour for the next three months, I think, or whatever yeah. it might be. Are we going to see more of faces like that, and how ready are they for us to see them? We have a lot of we have a lot of wonderful talents. I'm not sure you probably didn't watch it, but when you saw when you saw our U23 games uh, game against Tottenham, for example, we could watch it in the hotel um, the night before the game. Um, we have a lot of uh, real talent, uh, and Barry is doing an incredible job there. And um, so, but in the idle world. You don't play with three, four, seventeen-year-old. To be honest, um, in, in the same game, but it's it's like they are ready and they will be ready. That's more the more the case. They will be ready um, for sure. But um, whenever that will be, and um, it was w a wonderful thing to do. To be honest, on on Saturday to to bring them on, and um, they were smart enough to to realize when the scoreline got higher and higher that it's more likely that they will get that and they deserve it, and it's really nice. And I was felt for both in that moment, so Fabio I don't count in that um, in that department, to be honest, but for Bobby and Stefan, I was really happy that I could be the one who gave them the opportunity. So, um, yeah, I hope all the others come back pretty, pretty quickly, and then if, if then maybe not, but then in the future for sure, that's how it is. And we spoke to Alison yesterday, who was grateful for the first Premier League clean sheet, <laughs> ironically, since again, since Newcastle United. That was in, in eight, first Premier League clean sheet in eight matches for him. So, did he, did he need that, do you think? I appreciate that, that winning is, is more important. Oh, we yeah. needed it. Yeah. Ali, that's all. I don't think that Ali is now, yes, he wants to have a clean sheet because it makes massively sense. Um, but uh, he was not like desperate or something like that that he thought if we don't get it, I, that's why I was really happy about it to be honest because how I said when you're five and up at half time it's not unlikely that the opponent gets out and, 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 and sneak one in and then it's a, maybe score a second one or whatever and then it's like it's just a bit of taste you don't want to have that it was not necessary and the boys didn't let that happen um, yeah but clean sheets are for all of us very important yeah, and of course uh, how can you start a, a series with clean sheets only with a clean sheet so now we had it and um, now let's hopefully um, carry on on this path. Okay. Um, Jürgen, just one of the things you were, you were talking about, about being the right player if you were to bring a player in in this transfer window, and it has to be right for, for Liverpool and the club. Um, Scott Parker obviously is no longer in charge of oh, Bournemouth, um, and we, we don't know the reasons why, but it's been suggested <laughs> that, apart from what happened at the weekend, but it's been suggested that he would, wanted to strengthen his squad further, he didn't have that money. How important is it, even for a club like Liverpool, to be sustainable um, in this world that we live in and not just throw money at players if they're not going to be the right ones? I don't know what I'm saying, that I understood now right. Would that mean that if Bournemouth would have spent money for the wrong players, then that would have been worse than spending no money? Or would I don't know the reasons why, but it's been suggested that he was being committed. Let me say like this: when I heard it, when I heard it today, then I felt really. And I think that's the moment when you realise how important the right owners are. That's how it is, and it's not about spending because no, we all know the thing. They're a bit different. 
systems in the Premier League, how clubs are leaded. We spoke about it. Countries own clubs, so uh, and some rules don't let them do exactly what they want. If they could do, if they could stretch their um, their sort their resources, that would be really strange. That they, they could do absolutely everything because they are owned by countries. So and they have other clubs with other structures, and that's that's um, like us, and maybe I'm not sure Arsenal or, or whoever. Um, and then there are clubs like Bournemouth, and um, you saw now three teams coming up. It's um, Fulham, um, Nottingham Forest, and, and 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 Bournemouth. Nottingham is spending like, yeah, they spend, and um, Fulham is doing some stuff. And I, I can't remember that Bournemouth did a lot. So um, and that's then obviously difficult if you come up uh, from from Championship and you arrive in the Premier League, and uh, that's not easy. For a coach, yeah. so I felt really for Scott. Not because I don't. I think his team is not good enough. No, not at all. His team did not had just. I'm not sure who had that idea to give you uh, the first four games. He gives you Arsenal, City, and Liverpool. That's that. That's like set up. If you have nervous owners, then it's like set up for a, um, a new manager. Let's see how what he can do. So um, and that's why I'm. I was very surprised, very surprised. I think Scott is an outstanding manager, to be honest. What he did at Fulham, first job, and now at Bournemouth in a, in a championship getting up is, is an outstanding achievement um, and really difficult. And then you get four games, and three of them are against Arsenal, City, and Liverpool, and your owner tells you, see you later. Uh, that's really harsh. Uh, did I answer your question? One? No, probably not. <laughs> You it's always question, it's, it, 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 signing it, players never make sense if they are not the right ones. Never. I think that's what I was. Yeah, I was okay. To never, make. and it makes never sense. But they, 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 why would you do that? There are the right players out there for Bournemouth. Whenever you start with doing the business, there are the right players, of course, out there. So, but if you can't do it, or you are not allowed to do it, then there might come some up where they are not, which are not the right players. But I'm 100 percent sure Scott Parker would have had an idea um, who would have, would have been the right players. He is not crazy. He wouldn't have asked for players who cost 60, 70 million or whatever. He would have asked for the right players. But I cannot say if if, if they need strengthening or not. It's just um, it looked like they didn't do a lot of business, and that's um, when you come from a championship is. Tricky, and then you lose against these three teams um, in the in the beginning of the season, and then your owner tells you that's not good enough, and that makes no sense. So you do the no business together, then go through it. So, but you do no business together, and only one is responsible. That makes no sense. The, the one thing I was going to suggest, though, or suggest, or ask. In terms from from Liverpool, and you talk about being the right player for this club, and wanting to focus on the season, and once the transfer window is that's done. But you seem to be very careful with the money that the, the club spends as well here. So do you take do you factor that into the situation? I'm not careful. I'm not careful. I don't. I don't think. I thought at one moment that I'm, I have to be careful. No, it's we get told what's possible and what's not possible. That's it. And in this range, we try to to work it out. That's it. There's no criticism or nothing. It was all the time like this. We became champion in the season where we didn't sign anybody. I think was it the case? Did we sign anybody before we became champion? Who? Uh, no. No. no you, you so we didn't. And it was not the most famous approach <laughs> after becoming second. I don't say that's now the case. And we had injuries, and I don't like that. And it was the whole discussion since we start. It's like different kind of players we need, we need, we need. I understand that 100%. But you have an existing team as well. And the team you have is, you can, then obviously it becomes now more and more famous that clubs get more and more ruthless with players and tell them, yeah, you, you are not part of the squad anymore and these kind of things. I thought really that was this year harsher than in, in a lot of other years. That, that's not the way it should go. And I think players with time should punish that with thinking about these kind of clubs where I think, OK, I might, bet, might get good money for one year, but in the second year they have a different idea and then they want to push me out of the back door. So all these kind of things. You need to have your own values as well. So and um, with all the players we have here, we want to be, we want them to be here, and now we have to work with them. Yes, and unfortunately, the season started and we had too many injuries. The 100% true. 
and, and we ask us, ourselves all the questions, why that happened, how it happened, all these kind of things. But we have to get through this and that's actually for me, in my understanding, is it the Liverpool way as well, not with transfers and injuries, but in general, to get through it together. That's that what I what I like nearly the most about this club, because if this if we would be a supporter of this club only in the good times, that would have been an interesting ride, uh, because there were some lesser good times, obviously, um, and the people's got even closer to the club in these moments. So, And now when we are doing pretty well, in general, now we start getting picky with these little things and here and there, and if we don't sign him, then everything is rubbish so and that's not that's not how it is um, I want to develop the squad I want to develop um, the club I want to be successful everybody wants to be successful here 100 percent what does that mean is our situation as as it is in some other clubs no never was but it's good enough to work with it and that's what we are doing Hi Jürgen. Um, Newcastle is the next challenge and uh, if you look at their results, probably going back to the second half of last season uh, and now they've uh, brought players in, uh, do you see them now as a, a really strong team who could maybe be the next team that yeah. breaks into that oh, at least be. at the top? Yeah, they will be. Um, if Eddie gets time and um, stuff like this and I'm not sure they need another transfer window but if um, it gets time for it then they will definitely be. Um, and yeah, that's the world, the football world we are living in. It's completely fine. Newcastle is a great club and obviously um, has a lot of success in the past and now for a few, for a few years not that much anymore. Um, but um, they, they have not everything you need to be a top six or whatever that means club. I don't know whether Sam Maximan is going to be um, fit for the game, but he's, if he does, he's an obvious threat. But <laughs> do you see them as being <clears throat> stronger mentally and maybe at the back as well? Cause That's normal. In... They're unbeaten this season. They, they have a, they have a, since Eddie's there, obviously, they, they've got an awful lot of points, so they played a really good second part of the season. When I, I don't know exactly when Eddie started, so, but um, since he's there, they played really, really stable. Difficult for us to play against. <coughs> um, yeah, they are, they are a threat. So that's how it is. And with Isaac, uh, Isaac, I'm brought in a really good player, um, and not only him, but man, all the things. Uh, Bruno Gimaraes last year, smart signings, good signings. Um, Wood, absolute um, real machine up front. So these kind of things. And um, but of course, if Callum Wilson cannot play, that each team would recognize that because it's uh, he's a really a top-class striker um, so yeah but completely different animal I, I noticed in training I think you've got a couple of players coming back in contention Joel Matty Curtis Jones um, yeah. these players obviously going to be important with the amount of games that you've got coming up and yeah. is Thiago any any closer yeah I think Diogo can train from Thursday on and um, Thiago I think slightly later so we see um, but um, yeah, go later a bit. Of it. Callum, uh, Calvin is getting closer. Um, Queef, I saw now only walking outside. Callum going for normal tr goalkeeper training. Um, so yeah, there's light at the end of the tunnel, definitely. Thank you. More from the embargo, change. Yeah, when you, when you mention that, you get you get told what is possible, and what isn't possible <laughs> in in the market. That's interesting, yeah. That I don't decide that. <laughs> but do you feel like you have been back sufficiently? Yeah. By this summer? Yeah. Uh, but what this summer? This summer, yeah. This... <laughs> what does it mean back? Look, what I don't like about it, if I say now I'm not sure, and then we make a massive thing of it, but it's not. It was all I have to. Re I realize as well. It was always like this. 